subdivision surfaces are piecewise parametric surfaces defined over meshes of arbitrary topology. It is an algorithm that maps from a surface to another more refined surface where the surface is defined as a set of points and a set of polygons with vertices at those points. The resulting surface will always consist of a mesh of quadrilaterals. The most iconic example is to start with a cube and converge to a spherical surface, but not a sphere, because the limit catmull clark surface of a cube can never approach an actual sphere, as it is by cubic interpolation and a sphere will be quadric. The only difference between catmull clark and bilinear subdivision is the choice of positions for the new vertices. Whereas bilinear subdivision simply takes the uniform average of the old vertex positions, catmull clark uses a very carefully designed weighted average to ensure that the surface converges to a smooth surface as the levels of subdivisions increase. In these chapters, we will focus on computing the weights for the new edge points and the original points, handling various types of geometry such as closed surfaces, open surfaces, open polygons, open polygon curves, mixed topology, non-manifold geometry, optimizations, and finally sampling the surface normals from the subdivision limit surface. Our implementation of catmull clark subdivision will be based on open subdiv in Houdini, with small changes and improvements. And with that said, let's dive in. First off, we will separate topology changes from point transformations, meaning we will first modify the topology, then update the point positions. So the first stage is topology changes. Now let's look at the formal rules and illustrate them one by one. The Wikipedia page for the catmull clark subdivision defines the rules as such. Step 1. For each face, add a face point. Step 2. For each edge, add an edge point. Step 3. Connect each new face point to the new edge points of all original edges defining the original face. Connect each new vertex point to the new edge points of all original edges incident on the original vertex. Define new faces as enclosed by edges. This is basically bilinear subdivision. So we have already done all of this. The second stage is moving points. What separates catmull clark subdivision from bilinear subdivision is where we will move the new edge points and the original points. Step 1. Set each face point to be the average of all original points for the respective face. Again, this is the same as bilinear subdivision. Step 2. Set each edge point to be the average of the two neighboring face points and it is two original endpoints. This is where we start to diverge from bilinear subdivision. Let's call the edge point E. It is face points F0 and F1. It is neighbor points that are the original points in the geometry P0 and P1. The new position of the edge point E will be P0 plus P1 plus F0 plus F1 divided by 4. Or we can just say P0 plus P1 plus F0 plus F1 over 4. If you apply the same operation to all edge points, their positions will end up like this. Step 3. For each original point P, take the average F of all N recently created face points for faces touching P and take the average R of all N edge midpoints for original edges touching P, where each edge midpoint is the average of its two endpoint vertices. Not to be confused with the new edge points above. Note that from the perspective of a vertex P, the number of edges neighboring P is also the number of adjacent faces, 
hence n. Move each original point to the point f plus 2r plus n minus 3 times p over n. This is the very center of p, r, and f with respective weights n minus 3, 2, and 1. Let's call the original point p the edge points e0, e1, e2, and the face points f0, f1, and f2. Let's call the new point position p new because we will also use the original point position. Even though the Wikipedia article uses different letters, I will go by the more commonly used letters for the Catmull Clark interpolation. P nu is Q over N plus 2R over N plus N minus 3 times S over N. But what are Q, R, and S? Q is the average of the face points. R is the average of the edge points, not to be confused by the edge point position computed above. We are talking about the average of the original edge positions. S is the original point position. N is the valence of a vertex, which is the number of vertices connected to this vertex by an edge. For a simple cube, each original point will have a valence of 3, and 3 minus 3 is 0, and as such, the contribution from the original point becomes 0. If we apply the same operation to all original points, their positions will end up like this. Note that this step and the previous step are independent of each other, meaning they can be done in parallel, which is perfect for VEX. Combining both operations on the same geometry will yield the familiar subdivided cube shape. And with that said, see you guys in the next lesson.